so hey guys in the previous video i left over a question to you all that whether we should go with the uh, ui approach first or the backend approach first so uh, basically guys what uh, you should go do is uh, that you should go with the backend approach first because a ui is a part that does not take that much amount of time uh, that uh, takes our backend because the backend is the main logic where your data would be stored and your data would be shown so have you thought that uh, how your username and uh, this label oh, this is the password uh, would be stored have you thought that uh, what uh, what and how we would be storing this password anyone as in the previous video i told you that uh, we would be uh, uh, modifying our code and uh, we would be overriding this uh, login uh, thing so have anyone thought about that how we would be uh, overriding this uh, and i also stated that we would not be creating a custom object to store our logins and passwords because that is not a good approach so yes any ideas that what we are uh, gonna do okay so see then if you don't have any idea first we would be creating a apex class that is a login user okay from which the user would be logging in okay and uh, since uh, i want this class to be global i could have been public but uh, i want this to be global and or i enabled and i and uh, global static string login and in this string uh, i'm uh, i would be passing the username and my password okay now what we would be doing how we would be saving this so let me show you something uh, basically Salesforce is a very great platform. Let me show you that because communities login controller. This is the basic controller by which your Salesforce handles your login credentials. So the user information is not stored at our end. It is stored at the Salesforce end and via this class it uh, uh, what it does is it stores the information. It authorizes the information and it uh, thereafter performs the necessary security checks and thereafter a user gets into salesforce okay or gets to see the salesforce communities okay and one more uh, it takes help of one more class uh, that is uh, that is the site login controller this one so basically let me explain you what is your community's login controller so uh, and this is a with sharing class and uh, it contains a, a constructor and that is a default constructor and a page reference and that is a forward to authentication page so this is a method that returns the page reference so this is the start url uh, that it is getting from where it is getting from here the this is the url from your url section the display type and it is returning the network forward to authentication page the start url and the display type that means the start url uh, would be this string and the display type would be the page that you have referenced that either this is the home page or any custom page that you have created that doesn't matter but that is the display type so uh, in your site login controller if we uh, see uh, there is a login uh, function uh, that is uh, that deals with your login uh, so the start url uh, it gets the current page reference and the parameters uh, with the start url and thereafter what it returns is the username password and start url so now you would be thinking that how this would be of our use so uh, guys uh, this is of our use why uh, let us let me show you that see this is the domain of our site site.com okay and this is the let me say that uh, this is the uh, 
पेज यू आर एल और लेट मी सी दैट दिस इज माई कम्युनिटी यू आर एल बट आई वॉन्ट द होम यू आर एल सो लेट मी फर्स्ट पेज दिस सो दिस इज पेस्टेड एंड इफ आई गो टू माई होम सेक्शन सो वट इट इज स्लैश सो so uh, guys my home section has a default of slash url slash so that means if i uh, write a slash after this uh, so this would redirect to my home page so it would be slash s slash okay so this is the default path for your home as is set in here okay so now if we could see the page variation as well uh this is the default page variation that uh, is present uh, now what we would be uh, doing is uh, this is the home url this means that uh, after my successful login it should uh, go to the home page okay uh, that means uh, i would be using apex pages dot page page ref page reference page ref and i would be making site dot login this is the method and in this i would be passing the username and the password so what i have done is i have did i did nothing i called this method since this was the public global method i called this the login function and uh, Uh, in here, I pass the parameters that like the login and the password. Okay. So thereafter, I return page reference. So saving this from the site login controller, uh, we are directly calling this one the uh, username, password, and start URL. so uh, what i am i would i am doing is it is taking three parameters and the start url would be my home url so page ref friends i'm just calling the uh, site dot login from the site login controller and uh, this is returning me the page reference and uh, since this is the string so i would be doing page reference dot get url so this is our login file that would be created so this is the way how we would be bypassing the entire security of our login page okay this home url as a best practice you could be storing in your static resource or your custom labels so that we could get this in here okay why because uh, uh, if this is changed or this needs to be changed in the newer future so it uh, is managed by uh, the admin side not uh, we have not uh, to go to the developer side for time and again uh, updation of things okay uh, so i would be calling this class into my uh, wc so first of all in the manifest uh, members that is the survey class and the members this would be the login user and what i would be doing is i would be uh, having a uh, retrieve source uh, in manifest so i would be having this class so this ran and now i think so my uh, class is also present uh, okay so login user uh, we got our class so we created this class and now we what we would be doing is uh, we would be calling the method of this class uh, that is the login so what we would be doing is we would be importing this class import login user from at the rate salesforce apex login user dot login okay 
and this is the name of the method and in my handle login method what I would be doing is I would be uh, calling uh, this class imperatively so if uh, this dot uh, email is not equal to null uh, and this dot password is not equal to null so uh, then only uh, uh, my uh, further modifications or my further code should run okay so I would be calling the login function and uh, the login function and in here I would be passing the parameters so uh, what are the parameters of my class the username um, that is the email and um, the password is the password I guess password is this dot password and for email also we have to do died this dot email okay and uh, so this uh, would be returned in me then inside of then uh, because this is a promise uh, so result and uh, let me console log the result is and uh, we could be catching the error so uh, the error let me say console.log error or and error and one more thing is the uh, one more thing let me tell you when uh, we would be encountering this so we could not uh, deploy this sometimes uh, you might face an error in your javascript while you are deploying so try to deploy your html uh, if there would be no errors uh, then your html uh, or your entire uh, project would be deployed successfully okay so go back in your experience builder uh, just to refresh the entire builder so this would be logged in deploying the class to org actually I wrote uh, the name of the class instead of the method so that's why it posed the error go back uh, refresh this uh, so let me see that what uh, we get is so I would be uh, signing in so test at the test.com test so uh, password is test so see uh, it is displaying that your login attempt has failed make sure the username and password are correct okay so since we are the uh, system admin and we are putting the incorrect username and password so it is displaying us an error okay so what i want is uh, i want these errors to be handled in handled so that uh, it displays like uh, something or the other we are uh, getting wrong so uh, what we would be doing is uh, we would be making use of lightning design systems and i would be getting a dismissible alert okay so search for alert and in here see um, various kinds of alerts are is in here so I would see see the code of this and just be copy pasting the code so uh, now what we would be doing is I would be uh, displaying the error outside of my block or should I display it inside my box but uh, uh, the main idea should be that it should be outside the box so that uh, uh, it is uh, clearly visible across the uh, component uh, or the template so uh, error or uh, information so I would be doing is template if uh, true 
is error and this is my template now what I would be doing is uh, inside I would be copy pasting the entire code that I have created and 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 uh, what I would be doing is uh, I am see let me show you the thing that I was talking uh, was that Uh, this was the error now guys. So this error is coming from the body from the error body and the message So uh, what we could be doing is error message We would be defining a variable Okay, and we would be defining is error is to be false and in my catch I would be doing that this dot is error is equal to true and this dot error message would be error dot uh, body dot message okay so uh, in this way uh, what I catered is I catered my errors body message okay and and uh, rest it is fine and what I would be doing is in my if condition if all the things goes right if my result comes so I would win this dot is error should be set to false okay this is done and and yeah and in here I would be writing okay the error message Okay. 